Hey guys, welcome back to another vice restoration video. Um, here it is. Uh, and I really should start getting good at these intros. I should try to plan ahead what I'm going to say. Anyways, um, so this is a Monarch number 220. Uh, it's got five inch wide jaws and it weighs about uh, about this much. Um, it's kind of heavy, but not too heavy. Um, came with this fancy looking thing. There's a uh, a slot in the bottom where this square bolt slides in and then some washers and then you can so you drill a hole in your bench uh, big enough for this bolt to slip through and then you can tighten this essentially ginormous wing nut uh, and then this is a swivel base instead of having a fixed base it'll rotate around this uh, the single nut. Now the astute among you uh, may know that this came originally from the factory with some sort of um, base plate. Um, when I acquired this, the base plate was MIA. Um, so this boss right here is actually the lowest point of the base. The base is about um, like 3 16 to a quarter of an inch higher than the boss here. So if I rotate it, it wants to tip forward or you know it wants to move around. You can see I can just get a finger underneath this as it sits on that boss because of the missing base plate. So that's a bummer. And I didn't know that about this vise when I bought it. I just assumed Okay, it's got the original um, wing nut and bolt and probably washers that go with it. So I was all excited about it because um, I, I, you know, this is my first Monarch vice. Um, and then when I got it home, I set it on the bench and I was like, what the hell? Am I supposed to drill a three inch wide or a three inch diameter hole? Because that's, so this boss right here is about three inches in diameter. I'm like, I'm going to have to get a hole saw and drill a three inch hole, or at least start a three inch hole and, you know, chisel it out or something so that way this can fit into a recess in my bench. Um, so I did a little bit of Google image searching and I actually found uh, somebody had a scan of a really old catalog, like paper catalog. Um, and in the picture it showed a few other swivel base monarch vices um, with the giant wing nut thing and it was plain to see that there was a large uh, base plate. Basically it's a giant washer that this rests on and swivels on top of. So I, I was disappointed at that point to determine that okay this is missing that base plate, like, you know, I don't really want to drill a three inch hole in a, in a workbench. And I was actually thinking about putting it on this um, steel work table that I have. And I certainly am not drilling a three inch hole in this um, because I don't want to. Um, so what I did was order this. This is an eight inch diameter uh, 5 16 thick um, hot rolled um, piece of mild steel, A36 steel I believe and I was able to find this on eBay and so the diameter of this is just larger than the diameter of this uh, base here so my plan my plan is to you know find the center of this and then with a three inch hole saw cut cut a hole in the middle of this and that this will become a replacement um, swivel base or essentially a giant washer like I said and that'll go 
on the bottom here. So that way I only have to set that on the work surface. Um, so that this will have a hole in it large enough for this boss to sit inside. I only have to drill a hole large enough for this bolt and this boss will drop down right on top of uh, that hole and this and it's basically the same thing. The disappointing thing is that it's not original um, but I don't know. Uh, I'm, a, I'm kind of excited to give it a shot. Um, I've never really, I don't have much uh, experience fabricating. Uh, this is more fabric cobbling. Um, I don't know. It might work, it might not. If it doesn't, then I've just, I mean, this shipped, this was like 18 bucks. So I'll be out 18 bucks. Um, and I'll have to come up with something else. But I honestly believe that that will work. So if you're interested to see how that works out, please stick around till the end. Um, this, it looks to me like it was spray painted with either, I, I can't tell if it's like a, a really, really dark blue paint or, um, or like, a, like a matte black. It's hard to tell. Um, it has a bluish hue to it. I don't really know. I don't care for it. Um, there is some rust. It's pretty dry. Um, like the, just everything on it is dry. It hasn't been oiled um, in some time. So it's, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll take it everything apart. I'll break it down into its components and I'll probably, I'll probably strip the paint on this. Um, and I may repaint it. If it looks nice, you know, with that raw cast iron uh, finish, I may just oil it uh, because I think that's an attractive look for a vise as well. Um, that dark oiled cast iron is, it's, it's beautiful. So that's the plan. Um, like I said, I'm excited because this is my first Monarch vise. I've never had one and I believe Monarch uh, was a, a brand uh, produced by Prentice. So this is a Prentice Monarch number 220. Um, I have done a little bit of uh, Googling to try to figure out when this would have been made, uh, when they started making the model 220. Um, and I haven't really come up with anything. I've, I did find a couple of old catalogs. Um, but the 220 was not listed explicitly in that catalog, um, but there were some similar vices. So at this point, I, I'm very interested. If anyone watching this knows much at all about the Monarch vices, especially the 220, uh, please leave me a comment. Uh, you know, tell me everything you know about it because I'm really interested to, uh, to know what the deal is. Um, so with that, I'm going to start disassembling this into its components. It's just a set screw.
Okay, so this is annoying. So not that you can see. But right down here is a, so right here is a collar and that hole is where I got the set screw. That's where I pulled that set screw out of. And that collar right here is, it rides up against the inside of the dynamic jaw and that's what holds, um, that's what allows the screw to pull, it pushes against this face here, and as you unscrew, um, this pushes against this, and pushes the whole jaw out of the vise. And it feels like it's, it's catching. It's probably got a burr or something from the set screw uh, where they drilled that hole, and it's not sliding off of the screw. So I'm gonna continue to fight with that for a little while. And if I can't get it, um, I'll probably just leave it on because the screw is in good shape and it's not critical that this come off, that the handle come off in order to clean this vise up. I can always wire wheel this attached to the jaw. It would be nice to do it separate, but I have done it before I've had other vices where I couldn't get this off. Okay guys, so naturally um, I was struggling and struggling and struggling to get this collar off. And as soon as I turned off the camera, the very next pull came right off. So when I clean this up, I will, uh, I'll be sure to clean up the inside to make sure there aren't any burrs. Like it, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty gross in there. It's pretty gritty, grainy. Um, and the screw itself has a couple of spots on it, high spots. And I'll, I'll, I'll hit those with a file just to smooth those out. So when I go to put this back on, it goes on a lot easier. Um, let's see here. So I got my bucket for parts to be cleaned. I'm going to disassemble the giant wing nut here. Like I said, dry. Okay. So that can go in there. Here's the collar. And the handle with the main screw. I'm going to set that over here for now. And then here is the cast dynamic jaw. There's really nothing wrong with it. it uh, it's rusty in the middle where they didn't spray paint it. It's chipped a little tiny bit on the end here. Well, actually, I don't even know that it's chipped. It could just be uh, poor casting because it's like that on both ends here. Framing. It's not perfectly flat. Could just be a rough casting. And this here does look broken. I don't know if it was dropped or hit or something, but that's it feels cracked. It's got a fine a much finer grain structure. So it feels like a crack. Um, and it's got some rust in it. So my guess is it was paint the whole thing was painted and then it cracked off because there's it's missing paint here. So that's my guess. Here's the body. And again, you can see it says Monarch. You probably can't tell. Probably can't read it, but it does say Monarch. Number 220 with the lion's head here. This is uh, in pretty good shape. So there's a pin right here that holds this uh, tapered dovetail main nut in place. So I'm going to see if I can uh, flip this over, and sure enough, there's a hole right here that you guys can't really tell is there, but it is. So let me grab a punch. There we 
All right, I've got a uh, just a punch here, and we'll tap that out. So here is our here's that pin. A lot of times these are bent. Um, they'll be bent forward intentionally. So they'll set the pin in place and then they'll bend it forwards to kind of push against the nut. But this one's not. I'm going to use, again, I'm going to use the punch here and the hammer and I'm just going to tap at the base of the nut from the front to drive it out. And it's out. Okay, so at this point, it's disassembled. Um, this one came apart pretty easily, except for that uh, collar on the main nut, but that, or the main screw. But like I said, once I turn the camera off, came right off. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get in here and just try to scrape. There's quite a bit of, uh, you know, there's probably 40 years worth of grinding, you know, material and grease and dust and rust particles, all kinds of nasty schmoo. So I'm going to get in there and scrape. Oh yeah. Can you guys see that? It's like, oh, thick, thick with two C's. Gross. Flaking right off. Oh my lord. Oh my lanta. This is disgusting. And oh so satisfying. I'm gonna have to dump all this out on the table for you guys. And that's just from scraping the bottom and the one side. It's uh, quite a bit of crud. So I'm going to keep scraping this thing and uh, get all that stuff out. Are you guys seeing this? Oh my god. There's like, I don't know, I've done a few of these vices and there's always crap caught in here where the, the main bar slides in and out of the dynamic jaw or the, the static jaw. But this is ridiculous. This is like, I don't know, it looks like topsoil. <laughs> looks like someone knocked over a potted plant. Okay, you guys. Do you guys see this? This is nuts. Like I said, I, I've done a few of these vices, and in fact, I have a Colombian vice that I I got, I don't know, a little less than a year ago that I did a restoration on before I started making videos, and it was pretty gross, but nothing like this. This is insane. I mean, it's literally a handful. What I want to do now is I'm going to, I think I'm going to strip the paint off of these. I've got some uh, paint stripper here that I got at the Home Depot. Um, and I'll follow the instructions on the bottle. Um, basically, I'm just gonna, um, I'll put down some cardboard on my bench here 
and I'll lay the parts out that have paint on them and I'll use a rag um, to evenly coat all the painted surfaces. So I'll clean this up, I'll give this a quick scrub. I'll paint the paint stripper all over it and then it says for oil-based finishes to let it sit for about 24 hours. It says <laughs> less harsh on skin, uh, but uh, wear some gloves guys. It's, you know, we've all skipped using gloves or a respirator or mask or something or safety glasses because, oh, it's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> well, I can tell you, it is kind of a big deal. I mean, uh, a little over a year ago, I caught my fingers in a table saw. So, you know, it's it's a miracle that I survived, you know. Um, no, but I did actually. These two fingers are just a little bit shorter. Um, and that was just a, an act of stupidity. So, yeah, I could probably use this stuff without gloves, but the smarter person puts gloves on. So, little, you know, lecture over. Um, I'll bring you guys back once the stripper has had its time to do its thing and uh, we'll start scraping the uh, old paint off. Okay, so I put the uh, paint stripper on here and it's interesting, it almost looks like it caused more rust. Um, but you can see that the paint does scrape off. Not real nice. I wonder if I didn't put enough on. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this old chisel and scrape most of it off. And then I'll use my wire brush and get the rest of it off. And uh, clean up on this is just soap and water. So I'll clean this up and just try to remove all the paint and get it down to bare metal. And then from there, um, once I've got it kind of hosed off and clean, I'll go at it with a wire wheel on an angle grinder just to kind of remove any rust uh, that formed on this. I'm not going to film scraping because it's super boring, uh, but I'm just going to scrape this crap off, hose the thing off when I'm done, and I'll bring you guys back once that is complete. Okay, so while the paint stripper was doing its thing, I put a couple of the small parts in this little container with some, some well-used evapo rust. So here again is that large uh, wing nut, the bolt is in there, and the washers. So I'm gonna take those out, hose them off, and uh, clean them up, and uh, yeah, I'll, I won't show that, that's boring. And over here, um, here's the main nut, and you can see number four is cast in this side, and it doesn't look like this side has anything cast on it. And here is that collar that goes on the, uh, the lead screw. So they cleaned up pretty well also. Okay, here is the body and the dynamic jaw after uh, I stripped it with the paint stripper. Um, it's pretty rusty actually and I guess I don't know if it was rusty before it was painted and that's just the way it was or if I didn't really follow the instructions on the paint stripper properly and there's some surface rust caused by um, the moisture from the paint stripper. I, but I don't know, I've used the paint stripper that way before on other things and I've never seen rust like this as a result. So I'm not sure. Um, but I'm gonna wheel my, uh, my little toolbox out into the driveway, get the angle grinder with the wire wheel out and I'm gonna wire wheel all these down and hopefully get them down to like a nice, clean, bare metal. Um, that's the plan anyway. All right, I got the old wire wheel on the angle grinder here and 
let's get started cleaning this up. Does that, I guess. Cleaned up all right. Casting is kind of rough. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm sure you can. It's rather pitted. It's like that the whole, whole part of the dynamic jaw. It's consistent, at least. Um, so I'm just gonna do the same thing on the body and I'll bring you guys back when I'm all done. So I've decided that I want to paint this vise. Um, considering the, the rough casting, uh, it's not particularly attractive in its raw form, at least in my opinion. So I'm gonna uh, hit this with a rattle can primer. I'm using some uh, Rust-Oleum automotive primer. Um, it dries pretty quick and I'm happy uh, with its performance on other projects. So I'll uh, rattle can this real quick and then while that's drying I'm going to work on wire wheeling the main body of the vise. Of course the wind's not really cooperating with me today. All right, folks, we're back inside because it started to rain. And I've uh, got some Rust-Oleum gloss black uh, paint and a paintbrush. And we're going to slap some paint on this sucker. Um, I've used the gloss black paint before. I used it on my Reed 104 and a half. And I really like it. It's an oil-based paint, so it does take a long time to dry, um, which is the only bad thing about it as far as I can tell. Um, it dries nicely uh, when it is dry. It's nice and hard. Uh, it's pretty resistant to um, you know scuffs and wear and that sort of thing. It's a pretty hard wearing paint. So that's why I like it for vices. Um, you could certainly rattle can uh, this any color you want. Um, but I like the extra durability that you get out of the oil-based enamel paints. So I'm gonna move the camera over so it's not in my way and I'm gonna sit down and start painting. So this first coat, I'm kind of, I'm dabbing more than I'm brushing because the casting is pretty porous. Uh, not that you guys can see because it's not in frame. There we go. So the casting is, is porous. It's got a lot of pock marks in it. 
and I'm trying to make sure that I get paint into all of those little uh, low spots and sometimes uh, brushing you don't get paint down in there um, so I'm dabbing to make sure I get paint in the holes and then the second coat I will brush to give it a more even look um, that's what I did on my reed vise and that came out looking really nicely so lots of dabbing let it dry for a couple of days and then second coat My big head in the shot, sorry. You guys see my bald spot? Oh no. Well, so much for keeping my hands clean. You guys, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> okay. Gloves would have been a smart decision. But. Oh well. It's too late now. Alright, so I definitely have my order of operations out of order. I should have just done the top, and then once this was all like dry and happy, done the bottom. Because um, I got paint everywhere now. Okay, well, these look good. Uh, they certainly look better than my hands. Um, so I have a little fan. I'll plug that in and just, it'll blow some air across these to help them dry a little bit faster. Um, I think this says you can wait like four hours, uh, or you should wait four hours before you do a second coat. I'll probably, I'll probably give it six or, or more. Um, just because it's, you know, it's cool in my basement. It does it's not going to dry as quickly uh, in the basement as it was outside. So once that is no longer tacky and has a, a good set on it, I will do a second coat and that'll really 
look, make it look nice. And I'll probably wear gloves for the second coat because I should have. Okay guys, so now I have the uh, eight inch hot rolled uh, plate here that is gonna be the new base for the Monarch. And what I wanna do is find the center of this. I don't have a center finder, um, but I know that the rough di you know, diameter of this is eight inches. So I've got a ruler here. And what I'm going to do is just hold right at zero, and then I'm gonna watch I'm going to watch the 8 inch mark. I'm going to swing this back and forth until it's as close to 8 inches as it gets before it starts to switch back and go on one way or the other. This is not going to be very accurate. So I say right about there. Oop, I moved it. And you guys can't tell, but I'll try to bring you guys in in a, in a minute here. But every time I rotate it and put a new mark on it, I get, it should help me find a better average of center. So that's, that's the goal here, is to find the, as, get as close to center as I can, considering that I don't have the best system here and the right tool I'll just rotate it again now if you are going to be making holes or you, you know in round things often it's probably worth it to buy a center finder just because this, like I said, this is, it's not going to be the actual center, the true center. And for what this is, that's going to be okay. Uh, but if you need an accurate center, this is not a very good way of finding center. So each one of those lines, kind of, none of them really come perfectly to one point. So what I'm going to do is, there's an area kind of in the middle, right about there. And that's where I'm going to put my center punch. And uh, that's going to be our center. All right. And I'm just going to um, use a, a broader tipped punch to embiggen that. And there you go. There is an approximate center. You know, it's not, it's not perfect center, okay? It isn't. Um, but I'm essentially making a giant washer. There's going to be some wiggle room, some play in this anyway when I drill the hole. I'm going to um, drill it a little bit oversize so that way the that boss on the bottom of the um, the vise can rotate in there freely. I don't want it to bind or anything. So the fact that it's you know it's probably within an eighth of an inch of center but I'm going to make it an eighth of an inch the hole itself is going to be an eighth of an inch oversize so it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I think I've probably got a 3 sixteenths tolerance here where it, it doesn't matter. If you're looking for precision, that ain't going to do it. Um, but if anyone watching this has a, a, a better way to do that, like a better way to find the center of something without using a center finder, I would be interested. Um, leave a comment. That'd be great. Now the other thing I want to do is I'm probably going to drill a couple of holes like maybe right where my thumbs are like this so that I can through bolt this to the table on my drill press. So when I get the hole saw in here 
um, this isn't gonna, it's not the, I don't want the whole saw to grab and then spin this because um, I, I don't have a vise or anything that'll hold this to the table. So I'm gonna drill a couple of holes through here uh, just to uh, allow me to through bolt to the table and I'll put a couple of spacers underneath it so that way I don't uh, drill into the table when I've got the hole saw going. Um, so let me get the drill press set up and I'll bring you guys back. Alright, I've got my twist drills and my Morse uh, twist drill index. I scored this at a, an estate sale recently and cleaned it up. I'm pretty excited about it. I love these things. They're like functional artwork. Um, so I'm going to use a quarter 20 bolt, so I'm going to use a uh, 5 16 drill bit. Uh, just so it's got room to weevil wobble. Give that a nice crank. Now I've got, what it, all I did was I just picked one of those scribe lines um, and I measured in about an inch and a half from both ends and I just put a couple of punch marks for getting started. So I'm going to also use oil. I just use a dark cutting oil. Um, I've got a cool old uh, oil can. It's a golden rod. And it's in really good shape. I like this thing a lot. Um, so that's uh, all lubed up, so I'm going to drill a couple holes here. and. Alright. One down. One to go. Okay, I'm going to clean up these chips, I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got the steel plate, um, got the two holes that we drilled earlier, and I've through bolted it to the table, so this shouldn't rotate too much. And then I put a couple of uh, three quarter inch thick wood spacers underneath it just to keep it up off the table, so I have so I can clearance the uh, the hole saw. This is a three inch hole saw. The packaging with, on the hole saw recommends 115 uh, RPMs for mild steel. This uh, drill press will not go that slow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll slow it down to its slowest speed and I'll use a lot of um, a lot of cutting oil to help keep things cool hopefully. Um, and I'm going to take my time feeding into the steel because the last thing I want to do is roast the brand new hole saw. So I guess with that, let's get started. Okay, so I've just adjusted the speed down to the lowest speed. This drill has a digital readout and I don't know that it's particularly accurate but it reads 400 RPMs, for like 480, so it's like three times as fast, or four times as fast as it should be. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna take it nice and slow, and we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna speed it up for the pilot. So that's the quarter inch pilot, uh, that's done. I'm not sure if you guys noticed that, but just as I went through, um, this moved a little bit, so I'm gonna tighten those down one more time. So now that those are uh, nice and snug, the pilot is still good, I'm gonna slow this back down and put some oil, some cutting oil for the Pulse, huh? And we'll see how it goes.
This is going to be a mess. Because it wants to spray oil everywhere. Oh man. Might not work, guys. <laughs> Might not have enough uh, enough meat behind the uh, behind the motor to make that cut. Sounds horrible. Let me put some hearing protection on. It's not, it's not working well. Um, I don't have enough power uh, in the drill press to um, to push through that. There's so much friction uh, that the motor stalls, so I can't get any feed pressure, um, which is what I need in order to make the cut. It's um, fuck it. shooting it's making an incredible amount of smoke like this really should be done outside if this was an eighth inch I'd probably just send it but it's five sixteenths and I don't want to abuse my drill either Fuck. okay guys um, I don't really have another option so I'm just going to keep going. Um, it's making a ton of smoke and I put this piece of cardboard over the top just to try to keep it from splattering all over my uh, shelf over here. Um, I'm still getting showered in very fine chips. They're hot and everywhere. Um, I don't know. I'd say I'm about I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch in? It's hard to tell. Still have a long ways to go, and it's making a ton of smoke. So, it's probably going to stink up the house, and I'm going to get in trouble. Just feeding cutting oil into the groove. So this is interesting. <coughs> I just happened to look up at the digital speed readout here, and it was way up at 900, which is way too high. Uh, so I think the vibration from all this is actually jockeying things around up here, and it's increasing the drive speed, or it's it's changing because it's a CVT type thing. So um, I just turned it way back down. And so I'll just keep an eye on that and hopefully that'll help things, slowing things down. All right, I think that's helping. Um, you know, keeping the speed down, but uh, this is definitely too big of a uh, a tool for for this drill. Oh, 
We're getting there, guys. I think we're almost there. Okay, that did it. That sucked. That was not fun. Yeah, it's hot. I'm going to I'm going to let it run for a couple minutes. Just like I said to pull cool air through it without any load on it. All right. So these uh have been painted. They got two coats of the Rust-Oleum protective enamel. Um and it's it's cured. It's had a couple couple days to dry. Um, what I like, what I want to do is I want to go over the uh, the Monarch and the number two twenty. I have um, an oil based paint pen here, um, and what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to trace over the the cast Monarch name and the number two twenty, so it really stands out. Um, I'm not. I was debating doing that with the lion's head, but I think that won't look good. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, so here we go. All right, this one seems to be working a little bit, a little bit better, but the some of the letters are not cast very nicely. Like the M is just kind of just a blob, and uh, the R is missing part of the the top loop. So I don't know how well this is going to look. Worst case scenario, I'll have to paint over it again, and just it'll be all black. And it's so black, it's, it's actually hard for me to see some of the cast letters. See where I'm supposed to trace. So I have this uh, super cheap little paintbrush. Um, once this dries, um, I'm going to dip this in the black paint and try to touch up some of those uh, places where the white paint kind of ran. Um, the casting was pretty rough. Um, so that made it difficult. Like the letters were not very there weren't evenly cast, so some were like uh, pretty good, like down here where it says NO period for number. Um, these were pretty good, uh, but the M is kind of just a blob, so I'm kind of just winging it. And because it doesn't have a defined shape, the paint from the paint pen is just kind of running all over and spreading. So once this, like I said, once this dries, I'll come back and try to touch it up with the. Uh, the black paint with this little brush and see if that doesn't clean it up. Okay party people, the paint is dry, I think. Yeah, it's dry. And it's time to put this sucker back together. In case anyone's wondering, I'm just using 5W30 oil. Because it's what I had. Nice. Okay, that is that. Now, 
I did make a new swivel plate um, for this to rest on. You probably all remember the smoke show that that was. And so there it sits and it rotates pretty nicely on that. Um, but what, it, what I don't really like is this has, it's got the mill scale on the one side and it's a little bit smoother on the other side. Um, but I have a, I've got like one of those um, like paint stripper discs um, and they work pretty well actually on polishing things. So I'm gonna get that out on the uh, death wheel, um, the angle grinder, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do both sides of this, so it'll shine it up a little bit and it'll kind of smooth this. It's not rough. It's just not that smooth. It could be smoother, and it'll smooth that out. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I didn't bother to film the uh, cleaning of this. I just ended up using the uh, flap wheel, an 80 grit flap wheel. It worked a lot better than the uh, paint stripper disc. Um, so I've got a nice cleaner polished side. So that way when I put the vise on here, it's just, it's, it's that much smoother. So at this point guys, I think it's done, right? Um, and look, here's the mounting hardware. I just, I wire wheeled that. That looks good. Uh, this sucker is ready to get bolted down and put back to work. Okay, there it is in all its glory. Monarch number 220, ready to go back to work. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking in to the end here. To, see the finished project. Um, this is it's kind of bittersweet, honestly. I, I really enjoy working on these projects and it's, it's great to see them finished. Um, but then it's kind of a bummer because now it's done. Um, I think I'm gonna sell this one. Uh, I have quite a few vices. I've got um, a reed uh, downstairs that I really like. Uh, so that's my main squeeze, if you will. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, I've got a couple other vices here in the shop that I want to work on. Um, and this is a cool swivel system. I mean, it's cool in that it's novel. I, you know, I don't, you don't really see that anymore. Um, but I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I prefer, you know, the, the plate with three or four mounting tabs and then the twist lock. Um, system. I, I prefer that over this. I think this is interesting, but uh, I think there's probably a reason they don't make them like this anymore. Um, so I think this one will go up for sale and that's okay because it'll just help pay for another vice down the road. So I'll give you a quick panning shot here just so you guys can see it and get a better close-up view of it. And then that's going to wrap it up for this video. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon here on This Old Tool 53. And here again, you can see it just, just rotates on this plate here. And it's not oiled or anything, but it's nice and smooth just because it's, you know, it's a sanded metal surface. And you certainly could oil it, um, and it would be even smoother. I imagine once this has a little tension on it from, um, from the massive wing nut, it'll probably tighten up a little bit, so some oil might be good. Um, but. This one's gonna go be somebody else's vice. Although I do like the uh, 
the five inch jaw. That's pretty nice. That's a nice wide five inches. My next big, biggest vice is only a four and a half. But anyways, there it is. Thanks again for watching.